Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor, today I wanted to ask a question that I was asked that came in through one of our social media platforms and, and it was regard to Christians and marijuana use. And uh, this particular question that came in had asked, can Christians, outside the medicinal purposes, recreational, can Christians smoke marijuana and still be considered Christians? And, and here's some of the argument. It's natural. It was, it's the green herb. It opens my mind more to study God's word. <laughs> right. I mean, you uh, hear these things. And... He needs the spirit when you got smoke, right? <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's obviously uh, controversy related to it. We already know that we've been in conversation about that recently and all. You know, there is a controversy concerning the use of marijuana in a medicinal way. Mm. And so um, I'm, I was told that there are gels and things like that that will have certain marijuana properties, you know, the cannabinol or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not quite sure what, the, the, what it would be that's there, that they're extracting from the marijuana plant and all of that. But I've heard that there are certain things where you, where you, you, you rub on or whatever yeah. to help you with uh, various things, even cancer, stuff like that. I've heard that. So, that's a difficult question from that perspective because if there's a medicinal purpose, a non-recreational, you know, and you're applying it as an ointment, a salve of some sort, well, that I would say is, is different than saying that you relax by smoking pot or that you can actually um, read your Bible and get in deeper. Now, that to me is... is, is Though it's, it's wrong, it makes me laugh to think that. I, it, it, my kids have asked me, I'm, I'm real open with, with this with my church and all, as you know, John. Um, my, my, um, my drug of choice was pot. I mean, I, I enjoyed it, you know, and, and I had reasons to enjoy it. It did relax me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how many times have you heard of a, uh, uh, a bunch of guys smoking a lot of pot than looking for a fight. I mean, that doesn't happen, right? Maybe Twinkies, but... Yeah, they're looking for a liquor store to get something to eat normally, <laughs> you know, and we laugh about that because there's truth to that. You, you don't see people normally smoking marijuana and then getting angry and want to fight. You, there are other things that provoke that mar marijuana not being one of them. But here's the problem. Recreational use is a problem. You know, even smoking marijuana as a way to, to calm you, your spirit down or to help to diminish some of the pain you're feeling. I have told people in this fellowship that I, I truly believe that there are other forms of medication mm -hmm. that you can, uh, you can use that will more than likely and most probably alleviate those things. So. Because I had a, a, a real, not an addiction, they didn't claim it could be addictive at that time, but I most certainly had an emotional addiction to it. I, I smoked uh, pot a lot. Um, for me, on a personal level, I, I could never, I couldn't do it. I could never smoke a joint again. I can't do it. Um, it's three times more powerful now than when I was a kid. It can even be more, more it could be dangerous in a different kind of way. Uh, it most certainly contributes to a variety of things that, um, that even tobacco does because they are researching it more. There are those who research it more now, John, as you know, who are finding properties, even the causing of cancer in the lungs and things, that they're discovering that there are properties in marijuana that are, that are dangerous. So recreational smoking of pot because it calms you down or helps you read the Bible or gets you in touch with God. That's, that's, that's just not true. That, that is just not true. Recreational use of a drug is, is not a good thing. Any more than recreational drinking mm -hmm. is a good thing. When, when, when Paul said, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, I think there's a general tone in that which is saying, don't give yourself over to the influence of something else that will bring you to a point of no longer being in control right. because dissipation simply means to be out of control. So rather than being 
brought under the control of something else, where you yield yourself to something else. In his day, it would have been wine that he's referring to. Well, when you extrapolate from that scripture and form a principle, what is he saying? He's saying, don't give yourself over to the influence of something else. Give yourself over to the influence of the Spirit of God. And so, <clears throat> from a recreational use perspective, even if it's legal, it doesn't make it right. Even if it's legal, it doesn't make it moral. Because there are, there are laws on the books that, that are regarded as, as moral, because all laws are moral. And right. I don't understand the argument that, that restricting human behavior is not a moral thing. It is a moral thing. So that's why you don't drink and drive and, and things like that. I mean, there's a morality involved in it that, that here, especially in the United States, our civil law is based on. So even if they have made it legal, it doesn't make it morally right. Even if it's legal, it doesn't make it spiritually safe. So any person who, who says that they connect better with God, they're using the argument we used to use over 50 years ago. I come in touch with the power of the universe, or I, I see the cosmic mind. You can use a thousand and one right. different ways to <laughs> illustrate that. That's what, what, what I tried to do when I began taking acid as a kid. You know, I thought I would somehow connect with the universe mm -hmm. and all of that. When in fact, it, was, it wasn't uh, useful for that, of course, at all. So, in answer to the question, you know, if, if it's something that's in the form of a salve of, that you would rub on because it helps to di diminish, and you're not getting high from it, but actually being soothed, I'd say that, and again, I'm no doctor, but I would say that that is more acceptable. Right. But for you to smoke it and say, I'm getting high because I'm closer to God when I do that, that's just not true. And the, the other component that people are also, or researchers, and I'm not, and I'm not a re research expert, that the removal of the THC in the cells or everything else aren't in, that, in those mm -hmm. properties. That's what I hear. And so that takes that away. What really kind of concerns me is the, the, the mindset or the heart set of some of the believers who are saying, I want to get in touch with, therefore I'm going to smoke. Yeah. And, it's, and, 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 I've, and it kind of bothers me a little bit with that because it's not that they're smoking and going to go listen to a Pink Floyd album. It, it, this is God's word. And it's the spirit itself that will lead and draw in. That's deception. I mean, it's deception, deception of the highest form. If you say, I get closer to God, through using a substance rather than opening my heart to the spirit that's deception of the highest form not only that there's no way that anybody's going to be able to convince me because I had years of use there's no way that anybody can convince me that you can understand and discern the scripture with the spirit's help while you're in sin <laughs> while you're while you're doing something that is prohibited I am not to give myself to the influence of something else, bottom line. And so any person who is saying that, one, I, I don't want to say they're unsaved because God's the judge, but that is certainly the behavior of someone who does not know Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. That is the behavior. And to try and spiritually qualify it by saying God gave us the herb so that we can use, is it in Scripture, all the herbs? Yeah, all, all the herbs of the field, yeah. But he also gave you poison ivy, <laughs> and you don't use that for toilet paper. It just makes no Ouch. sense. So I don't, I don't agree with such an argument. Uh, well, thank you, Pastor. That, uh, it's a comment, and again, people interchange that with even alcohol, you know, and, and a lot of different things. And, it's and, carnality, yes. and that's what it is, an ex excuse to give in to carnality. We've had the arguments. I have never seen an alcohol evangelist winning people to Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. They're winning them over to their argument that it's okay to satisfy my desires of the flesh. It's okay. And then they come up with convoluted argument to give them the opportunity or the permission to do that. John, you know what? I know yes. it. We've been around a long enough time to know it's just an excuse to cater to your flesh. And don't judge me. Yeah, don't judge me. Well, you know what? Jesus said judge with righteous judgment. Now, how am I going to be able to correct someone's behavior if I don't make judgment per pertaining to it? So once again, it's just a twisting of Scripture where people haven't got an idea because they're not reading their Bible as much as they're, they're looking to the alcohol content of this whiskey or, you know, how many joints they can get. Right. right. Well, thank you, Pastor, and thank you guys for tuning in. And, you know, this is a topic that uh, 
that comes in circles, you know, and, and again, it's it's related to a lot of different things. And mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing with us. A uh, couple of things that are coming up Sunday evening, uh, Sunday morning, we have our, our services at 8.30, 10.45, look for you to come on out as you're taking us through Mark. Mark chapter 15, verses 21 through 26, the crucifixion. The crucifixion. I'm called, it's entitled at the execution of Jesus. Wow. It is a powerful portion of scripture, powerful. To imagine, yes, of to, course. well, we couldn't imagine. Uh, a great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Uh, men, this Sunday is our last uh, Sunday to purchase your Super Bowl breakfast ticket. Uh, it's, you can actually go to the gazebo or to our website or uh, stop by the business office before Sunday. After Sunday, it's uh, we'll just have uh, admission tickets only. I look forward to having you guys come. That's going to be Saturday, February 4th. Uh, as Anthony Munoz will be our guest speaker. Again, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.